tiny little bike, but a great way to start an episode. And today we are at East Bilney Lakes fishing the finesse bomb, I'm going to call it, or a micro bomb, you could say. And it's a method that for the last few months has been really good for me. And I thought it's about time I shared what I've learned over that couple of month period. So that is exactly what we are here today to do. We've got a little F1 to start the session with. Hopefully today it's going to be a selection of fish, little F1, maybe even some skimmers, some carp, stuff like that, and a busy day's fishing. And as I mentioned, this method has been very, very good for me. That sun's just come out as well, which is lovely, a bit of warmth, but there we go. First fish of the session. Let's get him slipped in the net and we'll take a look at the rig. Well, let's hope that continues and I'll be happy with my day's fishing. But let's talk now about the rig and the method itself. So, like I said, it is finesse bomb fishing. And to try and explain what I mean by that, it's gonna be where we're casting into an area where I think fish are likely to sit and making at least disturbance as I possibly can. So not putting a big feeder in or anything like that, trying to be really quiet, fish with some real nice, neat finesse rigs, and just try and trick those fish until they're really up for feeding, this method's gonna work. Like I said, it's been great for me for the last couple of months, and it's gonna work all the way up until the summer months. This has outfished people either side of me in matches recently that have fished a feeder and made a bit too much noise. So, it all came about for me with these, a new little product, which is inline pellet bombs. Now, today, I've got a 10 gram pellet bomb on because I'm casting about 22, 23 meters, but they do them in seven and a half gram and even five gram. So when that plops into the water, it makes absolutely no disturbance. And setting them up couldn't be any more simple. They're just little inline bombs. They're actually interchangeable. So if you wanted to change the weights throughout the session, that's doable and they just connect with a little connector at the end of the bomb. And that comes on to about a foot hook link. I've gone nice and light, it's 014, and I've got a size 16 hook. And on there, you might be able to see already, is a little bunch of maggots. But I'm gonna come on to hook baits and maggots and how I'm attaching these in a moment. I'm quite eager to get fishing. But before I do that, one other thing we do need to mention is the rod and reel. Now, because these are so light, it would obviously be no point fishing these on a big, heavy 12 or 13 foot rod. You need to get a really sensitive tip and a nice light rod. So I've got an Aquas 10 foot feeder and purely because I can actually tighten up to these very light bombs and read bite indication. It's so important to be able to read what is happening in your peg. That's just coupled up with a nice little balance, 4,000 reel, and I've got four pound main on there. So I'm eager to get fishing again. I'm gonna flick this out while I'm talking to you. And this is where it is so good because I've just plopped that in there. And that is made very, very little disturbance. And I'm going to come on to where I'm casting it in a little bit. But the important thing for me now is to sit and watch this tip, see if we're getting some indications to show us a few fish there. Hopefully we're going to catch a couple. And then the next thing we'll take a look at is where I'm fishing it and why I'm particularly fishing it in that way. carp of the session hopefully a few more to come and as I said we're at East Bilney Lakes on Bridges Lake and I've chosen to fish this particular complex because it's full of little tiny F1s some small carp and then some obviously bonus fish as well but I always say if you can fool those tricky little F1s then you can fool everything so this method works for tiny little fish all the way up to the big bonus fish that can win you the match now what I want to talk to you about is where you initially start fishing. So currently at the moment, I haven't fed anything, 
What I wanted to do, and this is why these finesse bombs come in perfectly, is you want to try and find out where those fish are. So if you look at my peg just over my shoulder here, I think the mother load, I'm going to call it, the hub of my fish, just by watercraft, is going to be somewhere around that bridge. They, they love structure, it's obvious. So I think somewhere along this far bank, but particularly under that bridge, is going to hold a lot of fish. Now I don't want to cast straight on where I think those fish are going to be. So if you watch where I plug this, there's a little, there's a little white sign, to, which is about, I don't know, seven, eight meters away from that bridge. And I want to start there. And what I want to do is pay very close attention to my quiver tip, looking for any indication of fish. Now, why I, I don't go straight to where I think the fish are going to be, because if you catch loads of fish straight away, you can spook them completely out of your peg. So you almost want to fish on the edge of them and just pick them off. And like I said, we've got no bait out there currently. We might do in a little while if we find them properly, but currently at the moment, you really want to look for indications of where the fish are. And you want to cast a really attractive hook bait in and amongst those fish, but not right on them. Now, I'll come on to hook baits at the moment, and another thing that did help me this morning, this is quite cool actually, on the East Bilney website, I don't know if you're going to see this on my phone here, they actually have a little video tour, peg guide, of every single peg, what it looks like without the water in. So I know that the island slopes away and about a metre off, it deepens off. So I think, to start with, I'm going to cast along this bank, starting roughly where I think they're going to be, and just look for signs of fish. I can't say how important it is just to find out where they are, then rather than hammering a feeder in straight where they are. You might catch one or two straight away and then you think, well, why has it gone quiet? They were there. Well, that's because you've disturbed them. They, they might go under the bridge. They might go away from you to the next peg. Try not to disturb them. And that's where these little finesse bombs really come into their own because they make no noise. You can keep picking those fish off one by one. So there you go, a little bit about where you cast it, where you feed them, and if it does go quiet, then you obviously work towards where you think those fish are going to be sitting. But currently at the moment, I'm happy it's how it's going. We've had a few bites. Looking at my tip here, I'm getting a few little liners. So I think we are just on the edge. Oh, there we go. There we go, another fish. I think we are just on the edge of where these fish are sitting and we're just picking the odd one off. I can see that by little indications on the tip. And then one of them is falling for that hook bait that we've got out there. And slowly as the day goes on, I may need to creep into where they're living, right in amongst their home. But at the moment, you don't want to do that and you want to feel your way into the session. I hope that makes sense. Look at this little fella. And that is where the nest really does show. If you can catch little ones like this, then you can catch they're not big and stupid, are they? But the big ones, you know, they come and hoover everything up. These little fellas, you do have to trick into getting a little bite from. So there we go, we'll get that one slipped in the net. We'll carry on fishing as we are, plopping little baits right in amongst them, just off the edge of them, and see if we can have a few more. going pretty well. I'm not sure why I sound surprised because as I said it has been working really well for me but the F1s and a little nest of small carp have certainly stumbled across those and it just proves that putting it in the right place is so important. Now I haven't really needed to change where I'm casting at the moment so it's been really good but if you weren't getting any liners or anything on your tip to indicate that there was fish there then you would need to move it along and just try and find out where those fish are sitting. But I think we got quite lucky in the fact that we found them 
nice and early. This one's putting up a bit of a fight. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and coach this one towards the net and show you this fish. And then we're going to talk about baits because hook baits are so important. And I've really played around with these purely because made a dive for the, the bank there purely because you are just fishing currently at the moment we're just fishing a hook bait no feed here we go look that's a nice little cup and when you are fishing with just the hook bait you need to make it ultra at we ultra appealing because you need to keep those bites coming and you need to make them find it so there you go that's a nice one he's going to be mega when it's a bit more grown up looks at our scale pattern for the future that one so let me put that one in the net and let's move on to hook baits while we are out of the water now i've been fishing maggots and i'm going to finish on that one but what i'll talk you through is what i've got on my side tray now i mean it's pretty much the world is your oyster with it really but give yourselves a lots of different options so i've got some six mil pellets some eight mil pellets i've got a tin of corn here i haven't actually opened it but corn is a really good hook bait for this you could try bread and I've also got in here, I've got a little hook bait pot and this is full of loads of different soaked pellets. Now, I do a bit of carp fishing. If you watch any carp fishing videos, go and have a look at them. They all talk about having the most attractive bait you possibly can and then liquids pay a huge part in that. So in all these pellets, they've all been soaking in, in various liquids throughout the last few weeks you get them soaking in some of your favorites and just make them really stand out and what the fish will be attracted to and that's exactly what i've done with a maggot so i've got some dead maggots i keep them in a bag and they're just going to be flavored with liquid so i've got some pineapple liquid i really like that this time of year and in here and you probably see my hands are a bit yellow now i'm not too worried about that but the pineapple liquid on these maggots makes them so irresistible and just makes them more attractive. I'm trying to get those fish to find my hook bait without having anything else around it. And it just gives me ultimate confidence that this shouldn't dry up, you know, because I'm not casting big heavy feeders to scare fish. I'm not fishing right where I think they are. It's so nice. And that's why I'm going to say it again, that word finesse. You need to be nice and quiet and stealthy. Now, the best hook bait for me doing this by a mile has been these dead maggots. And I'm actually hair rigging now. This is quite a, a weird way of doing it. You might not have seen it. And I don't really know if this is the best way. I'm still sort of deciding myself. But you get yourself a pellet band and open the band up and then wedge in there a big old bunch of maggots. Now, I just find the easiest way is to pick up a big pinch of maggots. Yeah, look at that. A big pinch of maggots, put them in there and then pull the band back over them. And then you end up with however many you get. It's a bit of lucky dip, three, four, five, but as long as you've got some in the band and they want to make a little like hedgehoggy type bait, but that is the best way I've found to do it is sort of take that lucky dip in wedging them in the band and we're going to flick back over to our spot and see if we can catch one. But yeah, with hook baits, that is the main thing. Make sure they are really attractive. <laughs> if you're going to, if you're going to, dye your hands like me don't worry about it. you're going to catch fish don't worry get yourself a towel dry it off oh there we go there's a little liner straight away there and i just know that there's a lot of fish where i'm casting if you were fishing for bigger fish then this would be even more important to cast about because you find they sit in really tight pockets and you have to exactly search out where they're going to be and that's where you want your bright flavour some big hook bait, whatever it may be. In each day will be different. You might catch them on pellet one day, a soaked up boiler the next day. But like I said, these little maggots here, they have been the one for me. So there you go, there's a little talk about hook baits, put it in the right place. And you can have a pretty good day's fishing. And that is exactly what today has proven to be at the moment. Bunch of maggots there, just sticking out of his mouth. Look, perfect. Right, 
the last thing that I'm going to talk about while that's fishing away. I have actually just cast a little bit closer to that bridge, just sort of chasing those fish as they've quietened away a little bit, but it has been a mega day. But what I want to do talk about is if you don't have, let's say, a good day like we have today. We've obviously landed where the fish are feeding, they're happy to do so, and it's been very good. But if you're fishing away and you're catching nothing, you've got to sometimes try something. And one thing you can do is just pick up your catapult and introduce, I'm talking not a lot, I'm talking three or four pellets. Oh, all right. Missed one. Three or four pellets into the area. And sometimes that can just create a little bit of a feed and response. Whether that be the fish are there and they didn't want to particularly go down and have a feed and the pellets just create something for them to feed on or if it actually does attract fish into your area if they're not there. Like I said I wouldn't do it if you've had a day like we are today but it's worth thinking about if you're not catching you've got nothing to lose have you so you may as well give it a go and occasionally that has made a difference to me. I still think the hook bait is the most flavoursome best thing in the peg so by putting very very small amounts of pellets in I don't think, there we go, there's a bite, I don't think it's making a difference by feeding. But that is the sort of last thing that I need to mention on this method, and it has been very, very good today. Look, this one's tiny, look at that, that's absolutely tiny. But it is another fish, hooks just popped out in the net. So what I think I'm going to do, I'll show you them anyway, doesn't matter how big it is, look how small this one is. <laughs> it's not one of my white <laughs> definitely one for the future that's the sort of size fish Chris catches from the beach that one but yeah what I'm going to do is probably fish away now for the next half an hour 45 minutes let's say and see if we can show you what we've caught at the end another good thing to mention about your maggots is you don't need to change them every time if you get them nicely in that ban you can probably do two or three fish when they're wedged in there so although it might be a little bit tricky to hook as I mentioned earlier you can sometimes catch multiple fish so there you go three or four pellets in there let's see what the last half an hour brings us What about that for a net of fish? I really enjoyed that one today. Great days fishing, really good fun. Like I said, it's been a method for me that over the last few months has really, really proved good. Some finicky feeding fish in there and perhaps what you'd not expect to fish and catch on the bomb. But let's put that word out there again, the finesse word, fish it how I said. They love their little ball of maggots today. It's working really well, so why not get out there and give it a try and if you do, let us know how you get on. Don't forget, obviously, hit that like button on the video, hit the subscribe button, and we will see you again on the next one.